the rooms. Oh, look, it is week one. Dash. By the way, what is that? Yeah, was that? What were you in business school when you uh, took that picture? I don't know. I look young and cute. Okay. Uh, now you're old and cute. Here we go. <laughs> so we got the top five teams in the NFL as voted on by you and only you after one week in the season. Go. Yeah, one man gets a vote. I go with the Bucks right here. They had an impressive win against, I think this is more a shot. They're not any higher because I don't think the Cowboys are that good. So they didn't really challenge the Bucks. So we don't know much about how that offensive line is going to hold up, how good Tom Brady and those receivers will be this year because they just ran the ball and dominated them defensively. So right now, I like the Bucks. They're going to be number five. Number four, we'll go with Justin Herbert and the Chargers. They made some additions, so they were not completely perfect on defense. They were a little rusty. They're getting together, even though they turned the ball over a lot. You see that throw? Justin Herbert is so good at football. He's only getting better, it appears. This team, again, they're in that group of death, so it's going to be tough for them to win a Super Bowl because it's going to be challenging, but I got them at number four. Number three, this is the one that's going to upset people. Yeah. Minnesota Vikings. Number three. Number three to Minnesota Vikings. And this is my reason. The same reason why the Bucks, I have them a little lower because they beat a bad team. The Vikings beat a good team. And I was so impressed with their offensive play design because we looked at this game and people were thinking, you know what? You got to stop Justin Jefferson. They moved him around. They ran unique routes to make it really easy for him to get open and to take pressure off Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is the, is the reason why you might say they're not a Super Bowl caliber team. They they made life incredibly evil, easy for Kirk Cousins. Number two, Josh Allen and the Bills. What they did to the defending Super Bowl champs was outstanding. They had some mistakes early in that game that made it closer than it should have been. But I don't think that the Rams are as good as they were last year. I don't think they're even close to that because mm -hmm. of the losses that they've had. And uh, the pass rush for the Bills was what really made me impressed with them. So we'll see how they do going on. But Y'all know who number one is. It's Patty Mahomes. Excuse me, Patrick Mahomes in the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't want to get tweeted at by his mama. I call him whatever she say to call him. So this team, the way that they came out and dominated, uh, admittedly, not very good. Cardinals team was really impressive. They completely dominated them from start to finish, and we know they have the pedigree and the coaching staff. Okay, so I know everyone is going to yell at you. Uh, let right, me say go. this. The only thing I disagree with is that I would have Buffalo at number one. I love your pick of Minnesota. You were saying you believe the Vikings are the best team in the NFC. Jeff Saturday, why did you react that way? I think the Bucks are better than the, than the Vikings right now, and I think the Eagles would make an argument for that, for that same spot. So I like both of those teams. I like what Minnesota did, again, but his reasoning for why the Bucks aren't higher because they played Dallas and then he puts Kansas City at one after they beat the well, Cardinals and the Bills beat the Super Bowl champions and he bumps them to two. The, the Harvard educated brain didn't work. It didn't work <laughs> this morning. It I didn't didn't work tell this you, morning. It's, you know who else would have the Eagles ahead of the of Vikings? Dominique like three segments ago when he had the Eagles <laughs> in the <laughs> Super Bowl from the NFC. The Bowl. Right. Well, it's really not it's I'm watching the show. So, so Micah, do you want to explain it to him or do you want me to explain it to him? I think that they're going to win a Super Bowl, but you're asking me for my power rankings right now after week oh, one. Oh, the power rankings yeah, right now after week this one. Is this this was the team that was most impressive to me. Right. And the, what they did to a much worse opponent is not anywhere close right. to what this team did they, against a much worse opponent. But the Marcus team that's going to beat Marcus, team that everyone's going to focus does not clearly. Currently, have sufficient power to do so. <laughs> Marcus, they're going to vote on. They're going to react to Minnesota. What do you think? I look Minnesota power week power ranking week one, but the but but to me the Chargers should be in front of Minnesota. The Chargers played a team that I think is going to be a playoff team in the okay. Las Vegas Raiders, hmm. and then too like I would. Fox, I ain't mad at the top five. I, I just would ch I would change the order. I would put Bills. I would put Chiefs. I would put Chargers, Vikings, Bucks. That's what I would do. Fair I stopped enough. listening a long time ago. At the end of the day, he is posing. the interesting part of the conversation though. is, is Minnesota for real? And yes. look, I mean, Michael Lurvin is picking them before the season starts to have an enormous year. We're going to yeah. find out. But I am riding, regardless of what ridiculous things he's doing behind me right now. I am riding with my man, Dominique. I think oh. that the Vikings... Vikings oh. are going to be Ooh. the surprise team in the Ooh. NFC this season. As oh we continue, oh Matthew Stafford, Joe up. Burrow, yeah. Aaron yeah. Rodgers, yeah. they yeah. had one yeah. thing. That's what it's going to be, but your opinion should not have changed. If you love Trey Lance before the draft and what the 49ers are going to do, that shouldn't change because of what happened in Chicago. So, Marcus, then let's deal with the second piece of it. Based on what we've seen through now, you know, 16 games plus one, 
and and everything else. RC is saying they took the wrong guy, that they should have taken the guy Chicago had who won the game on Sunday. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, look, look me and RC talked about this at the draft. Like, we thought Justin Fields was right there along with Trevor Lawrence as far as what he could be in this NFL. Like, that was, that was something that we talked about on show after show, and why is he not in this conversation to be the quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers along with Mac Jones and Trey Lance. But two things can be true. Like Jeff, Jack, like Jeff just said, it ain't time to give up on Trey Lance. First of all, he played in a damn monsoon. This is a running football team <laughs> where obviously that's compromised when you're playing in those type of conditions. It's, it's against what the San Francisco 49ers really like to do. And then second of all, yeah, we thought Justin Fields was better. We talked about mm -hmm, the lack yeah. of reps that Trey Lance has had in college. We talked about him coming into the league from a lower tier uh, level of college. We saw Justin Fields play against guys in the Big Ten that you're going to see in the NFL. That's always the case. Doesn't determine how good you're going to be. It's just something that prop that gives us as former players a little bit more comfort about this guy has seen the type of competition that he's going to play against on the next level to some degree. But yeah. ultimately, we we all, not all, but RC and I believe that Justin Fields was the second best quarterback in this draft, which is why I was screaming he should be playing last year for the mm -hmm. Chicago Bears. Take your lumps, progress, and now you get to be the player that you need to be. But ultimately, fellas, Trey Lance, the quarterback in San Francisco for a long right. time. They gave up Correct. a lot of first-round picks to get him. And, and so that then begs the question, because sitting yesterday in that seat, another guy named Dan, who's pretty good at evaluating quarterbacks, mm -hmm. was saying there were things he saw that really upset him, and which sure. is to say the, the fundamentals, some of the uh, things that, you know, that, that most people might not normally see. From the people you talk to around the league, how much concern was there about that performance? I, I think a lot of people are willing to write it off because of the conditions. And, and you know, running football team that lost its running back early, that didn't have its run-blocking, you know, monster run-blocking tight end. In the, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. Yeah. Trey Lance is going to struggle. He's going to have bad games. He's going to have bad throws. He's going to have bad possessions. He knows this. Kyle Shanahan knows this and has said as much. They're going to have to ride that out and do the best they can to mitigate it. But R.C., as usual, is, is nuanced in what he's saying. He's not just saying he thinks Fields would have been the better pick. He's also saying the Niners made a mistake in keeping Garoppolo because mm -hmm. when Lance inevitably does have rough patches, it's going to lead to, oh, should they be going to Jimmy G? And that's why 100%. it's up to Kyle yeah, Shanahan I, I think, to manage that locker room. I think it's going to lead to that in the media, but I have a hard time believing that that's actually going to happen in the locker room because as closely as we watch the 49ers, the 49ers watch the 49ers. Yeah. They were a part of that team in the playoffs last year when Jimmy Garoppolo was – not, not was, was bad. Yeah. And even the playoff games that they won, <laughs> you're Jimmy saying they was him. You're saying he was carried by that team. Yeah, he was. And I think that the players know that. And my guess is that they'd be willing to sustain whatever growing pains there are. As long as Trey Lance has a good play or a good game every now and then to give them hope that he can turn into the type of quarterback that they want him to be, I think most players in the locker room, as much as they like Jimmy Garoppolo, they remember what happened last year. And they remember what happened – in the Super Bowl. I think they remember that and they have hopes that Jimmy, nah. that um, that why, Trey Lance can transcend some of those mistakes. That's why Ooh. Shanahan's messaging internally has to be as strong and consistent as it's been externally because he needs that buy-in yeah. from the rest this, of the roster. This, is, this yeah. is GM Fox, right? This is GM <laughs> Fox. Let me wow. tell you something. When you're in the locker room, bro, they're not worried about two years of development. What they do know about Jimmy G, whether they're carrying him or not, is they win dang near 70% of their games when he is playing quarterback. When he's not, they don't win nearly that much. So something happens has to change when Jimmy G is in the game.